Flix Black Friday event is underway, which means deals, black buttons, and glow-in-the-dark labels. But I've also been playing around with the LR Hub, and if you're running Home Assistant, the LR Hub can connect directly to Home Assistant via MQTT. And in this video, we're going to talk about how all of this helps you automate the boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. Flick sent me their LR Hub to check out, and I have to say, I like this one a lot. I've only been using Flick products for a little bit, and I know they're not everyone's choice for smart buttons, but I have to say, if you're thinking about getting into the Flick ecosystem, or have some Flick buttons laying around, the LR Hub brings these Flick devices to Home Assistant via a local integration. I'm going to walk you through how to set that up in just a bit. But first, for those looking to add Flick devices to your smart home, let me give you a rundown on the deals going on this week. If this is your first introduction to Flick, they offer a range of buttons that can be used to trigger automations or directly control your smart home devices. I don't think they're all that intuitive, at least not enough to be a main interface to your smart home, especially in a house frequented by guests. But they do work well for quick overrides to smart home actions, panic buttons, or even manual control when your smart home automations fail. And they're going to fail at some point. By the time you see this, VIP customers already have early access to Flick's Black Friday deals. And in some cases, we're talking up to 60% off, which definitely makes these little buttons more compelling. VIP customers also get access to a VIP raffle, where you could win something from one of Flick's partners. On top of that, if you use my VIP customer password, Jeff VIP, you get an additional entry to that raffle. I'm not real sure if you can still sign up to be a VIP customer, but just in case, there's a link in the description of this video. But don't worry, if you're not a VIP customer, starting on November 22nd, you get access to those deals that could get you up to 60% off. There are also black flick buttons and kits available for purchase if the black is more your style. Personally, I like the black ones better. And if you're planning on purchasing a kit over $100, you get these glow-in-the-dark stickers for free. Be sure you use my affiliate link in the description to let Flick know that you heard about all of this from me. Whether you decide to pull the trigger on Flick or not, let's talk about this LR Hub and how to set it up so we can directly connect it to Home Assistant. My previous experience with Flick was with the Mini Hub, which gets the job done, but this LR Hub takes things to the local level. This hub has an ethernet port, which is definitely going to be more reliable than a wireless connection. It's easy to set up, but just to be clear, if you have two hubs, there's no way to extend your range with multiple hubs. Your Flick devices will simply want to connect to the closest hub. So in my opinion, the LR hub is the way to go. And that's because with the LR hub, you have SDK access. This allows us to run a small script on that device that connects to your MQTT server. So button events, can be seen in Home Assistant via your local connection, as opposed to using something like a webhook call. Once you get the LR Hub added to your home, we need to first enable SDK access in the Hub's settings. What we're going to do is set up a little script that runs on the Hub and then sends the button status to Home Assistant so we can automate off of it. I'm going to follow the instructions on the Flick to Hass GitHub repo. Link is in the description. This, of course, needs an MQTT server connected to Home Assistant and SDK access enabled on your LR Hub. This won't work with the Mini Hub, and I suggest having your Hub connected to Ethernet just to make sure you don't run into any connection issues. We are going to head to https colon slash slash hubsdk.flick.io, and you should see your LR Hub listed. When you click it, you'll be asked for a password. That password is on the underside of your hub. Once logged in, we need to create a module. What you name it doesn't matter, but MQTT here is a good choice. Once you've added this module, you'll get two files, a main.js and a module.json. We need to edit the main.js file. So click on it and then jump back into the flick to hass repo. Click on the main.js file, then click raw in the little bar at the top. 
This will get us clean code we can copy and paste into our SDK module. So copy all of that and head back to the Flick Hub SDK and paste that in to the main.js file. We will need to edit some things in this file. For example, server will need to be the IP of your MQTT server. And if your server requires a login, add the username and password up here. If you're not using the username and password with your MQTT server, be sure you get the modified version of this line from the flick to has readme. After that, I hit the hotkey to save this. Not sure if that's required or even if it works, it's just what I did. Then we need to create a new file. Just right click on this module and choose new file. The name of this one does matter according to the readme, so name it mqtt.js, all lowercase. Then we need to jump back into that flick to has repo and copy the contents of the mqtt.js file. So click on the file, click raw, and copy everything. Flip back over to the flick hub SDK and paste it in, that mqtt.js file. Again, I hit the hotkey for save, and that's it. If you got your MQTT server and creds in the main.js file, you can go up and hit that play button at the top. And if all goes well, you'll see the connection made in the console. Oh, and make sure you check restart after crash. Now, if you check your Home Assistant devices, you should see any Flick buttons you've already connected to your Flick hub. And this does include the Flick twist. Although at the time of this recording, it appears that the twist functions are not sent to the MQTT server, which of course isn't ideal. You can still leverage the webhook action to connect those twist actions to Home Assistant. And we can hope that that functionality will be added to this MQTT server piece soon. In any case, the press, double press, and hold actions will get registered in Home Assistant which means you can build an automation that triggers when your flick button actions changes to click, double click, or hold. So you could set up your automation to look like this. For the triggers, we're going to use state. And for the entity, our flick button action entity. Now this action will almost always appear to be okay because the action will only change for a fraction of a second, but it will be long enough to trigger the automation. Just make sure that for each one, you set the two to either click, double underscore click, or hold, and that each one of your triggers has a trigger ID. If you want to specify a from, make it okay. But I left mine blank. Then for action, use that universal choose action. Here we get to set our options to look for the trigger ID and do our action. So now I have an action for click, double click, and hold. Now when you press your flick, your automation should fire almost instantaneously. For those that have an Apple Home, you could use the Apple Home to get these devices into Home Assistant. But unfortunately, I don't see a way to pair this LR Hub directly to Home Assistant using the HomeKit integration, because there's no pairing code on this device. You could connect it to Apple Home and then get it into Home Assistant that way. But no matter your method, that means your flick buttons will be integrated with Home Assistant over your local network, which really is the best way to automate the boring stuff. So be sure to check out the Flick deals this week. And thank you to Flick and you for supporting Slacker Labs. Mm -hmm.